Hi everyone, Di Hocking here coming to you from my lounge room. Just wanting to introduce a very special message that we have for you today. It's a message that's going to surprise you. It will surprise you because first of all, we had planned that this was going to be a message in person with Ron and Ann Matheson from Uganda. Unfortunately, because of travel COVID restrictions, they are still in Uganda, but fortunately, we've been able to continue to invite that message that they have for us online. And so it's all going to, surp it's going to surprise us as well, because not only are they online, but we are also online. So as we listen to this very special message, just remember that whenever there's a Jesus event or a kingdom event, whenever Jesus is doing something, Surprise is the right word. In the Gospels, we read about the people that were walking with Jesus and receiving from Jesus were amazed. And if you want to read through Luke, you will just see that word amazed many times. And I think today we're going to be amazed and surprised by the message that Jesus has given Ron and Anne for Yarra Valley Vineyard and for us as individuals. So it will surprise you because what we were planning hasn't worked out in the way we thought, but it will also surprise you because this message is a testimony, it's a challenge, and it's also an invitation that they bring to us. It will surprise you because God has unleashed and unveiled a whole new phase of ministry in Uganda for Ron and Anne. And it surprised them that they are now worship harvest local pastors and there is a new church that is growing daily new christians are coming to faith muslims are turning to jesus people who need to know transform life in jesus this is happening daily in this new church that ron and Anne are pastoring they are also surprised because they have been the answer to the prayers of this new church worship harvest the prayers and the promises that God gave this church, you'll hear in the story today, were fulfilled when Ron and Anne began to plant this church with them in this area in Uganda. And we are just so, so thrilled to be able to hear that part of that story that's been happening over the last few years for them. So Yarra Valley Vineyard, we have watched Ron and Anne since they were called to Uganda over 10 years ago. We watched them develop and build and establish an amazing kingdom work there through engaging education. And now we're going to hear a part of a story that the Lord's opened up to them in a way that is surprising. And we want to celebrate them and celebrate all the goodness that God's releasing through them. And so as we hear from them in another phase, another establishing phase, I just want to say this is kind of a different message than what you might have expected for today. And I've had a chance to preview it, so I just want to give you a chance now to posture yourself, to be able to put yourself in a place to receive from them. So they're bringing a message to us that is a testimony and a teaching. And whenever there's a testimony or a prophetic part of teaching, it means that the Lord wanting to do something through this message. Now the word that they have used and their prayer on their hearts is that they would love this to be a message of testimony, teaching and impartation. And when they use this word impartation, we are biblically able to say, oh, that's what they say in when Paul writes in Romans 1, for I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift that strengthens you. So this message is one that we can receive impartation from God through Ron and Anne that's going to strengthen us. And you'll also know that, you know, Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 2 that um, he wrote, we impart a secret and hidden wisdom for, of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. And then it says, but as it is written, what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit and for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. So today we have a message that is also going to be 
led by the Spirit and unveiling some things that are really important for us as a church right now. So not only are we hearing story, testimony and what God's doing and saying, do it again. We're also saying, Lord, we want these principles, these words, these breakthrough moments that Ron and Anne have received. We want them to be part of our life here as well. As a church that has been part of their walk, we say we receive that. And so as we as we hear these lovely people sharing another phase of, of life in Uganda, I just want you to be ready to receive what the Spirit has for us. This is a, uh, also a message that surprised us because we had been preparing for a love offering to give to Ron and Anne to show them how much we love them, how much we honour them and how much we celebrate who they are and all that God's doing through them. You'll find out in this message there's a surprise as well that God had been speaking to them about generosity and honour. And so as we open this message with Ron and Anne, be ready for some surprises. Be ready to be amazed because Jesus is at work, both in Uganda and here at Yarra Valley Vineyard. And Lord, we are ready to receive. Here's Ron and Anne. Good morning, YVV. Hi. It's kind of good to be with you, although we did have better plans than this. Yeah, it would be lovely to be there in person, seeing you, seeing your smiling faces. Yeah. So my name is Ron Matheson. And I'm Anne. And we're going to spend a few minutes talking with you guys this morning. But right for now, Anne's going to sit down and I will talk. So we are YVVers from way back. We were... We joined YVV not long after it uh, began. And uh, both of us were on the eldership for some time. I was on staff for seven years, uh, working mainly with administration. In 2009, I did a mission trip here to Uganda. And then in 2010, uh, Anne came with me again, same thing, with an organization called Hope Builders International, who were building a village, uh, a children's home for orphans and widows. We then said to Hope Builders that we would come for all of 2011 and help to get things up and running and well established here. And so this we did. We lived in Uganda for that year. And during that year, it became uh, important to us to do something about education. Both of us have been teachers for a very long time. And so we bought some land and opened a school here called Ginger Christian School at the beginning of 2013. Our main purpose with that was to develop ways and new ways for teachers and to train teachers in, in how to teach in different methods to what they had been taught and what they were practicing. In 2019, we opened Harvest Vineyard PTC, Primary Training College, to train and disciple teachers from the beginning. So students out of school uh, came into the college and we have just completed uh, our first cohort have gone through and uh, completed their training. In 2018, we joined Worship Harvest Church uh, in Ginger and uh, we fairly quickly met with the leaders there and said we, we love the place, but we had zero leadership ambitions. We had enough to do already with the, the school and the college and all the things we do around here. Then lockdown came in 2020 and the church went fully online. And so we began hosting at home in our living room. Uh, one or two people joined with us. And then as restrictions eased slightly and more people were allowed to gather, we moved to a classroom and some extras came with us. And then our students came back. And so we needed to move upstairs and things just kept growing. And by early this year, uh, we had 85, 90 people in our hosting centre. And then it even got a bit bigger than that. And so in May, the decision was made that we were planting a location of Worship Harvest. So we are now, Anne and I, the pastors of Worship Harvest Wairaka which is one of 22 locations of worship harvest throughout Uganda. 
Right now, you're going to get a brief message from Apostle Mose, who is uh, the lead pastor of Worship Harvest in Uganda. He's called Apostle Mose. I used to have problems with that kind of thing, those kind of titles. I don't anymore. This guy really fits the bill. He's a real apostle. Hello, Yara Valley Vineyard Church. My name is Moses Mkisa and together with Sarah Mkisa, my wife, we are privileged and honored to lead here at Worship Harvest in Uganda. Worship Harvest is a multi-site church with 22 campuses and more than 12,000 people now. And uh, I bring you these special greetings because recently we got a fulfillment of a prophecy when we had Ron and Ann Matheson plant one of our campuses and they became the first non-Ugandan pastors to lead a worship harvest church. They now lead worship harvest Wairaka, and I know that they are speaking to you this morning. And we, I just really wanted to bring special greetings and tell you that we are so blessed by Ron and Anne, and it's been a great blessing to receive them and have them part of this church family, even as they are part of your church family. So this morning, enjoy the message, and we bring you regards, and we say, God bless you abundantly. Thanks, Apostle Mose. Uh, what we'd like to do now is just share a few things with you guys that we've been learning over the last year or so. I'll go first. And a couple of those things have been that of honour and generosity, those two principles. We had a teaching series late in 2020 on honour. And to me, honour had always been really just a matter of um, respecting someone and maybe even speaking positively about them, saying some nice things about them, actually putting it into a bit of action. That's all I thought honour was. But in the Bible, we learn something a bit different from that. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2, Paul quotes the command that is given in first in Deuteronomy, in chapter 5, which says, Honour your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Well, there's no problem there for us, no challenge in that. Both Anne's mum and dad and my parents have passed away. So, and we were pretty nice to them when they were around. That's okay. Then we move to uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, where it says... Honour the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. How do we honour the Lord? With our possessions, with our money. Honouring involves giving of our money to God. And let's not mix this up with our tithe. The tithe is his part already. We're just returning that to him. Now, honouring the Lord involves giving of our wealth, as the NIV translates it. But that's okay. Our parents are still dead, so we don't have to give them anything now. Then we got to talking about spiritual parents. Now, that's not a concept that I paid much heed to over the years, and largely that's because most of my pastors have been my age or younger. Um, so I guess I'm still off the hook. I've never really considered and never functioned in that way that uh, they were spiritual parents to me. But then we got taken to First uh, Timothy five seventeen, where it says, "Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honour, especially those who labour in the word and doctrine." Uh oh. Now it might be going to cost me. I'm supposed to other to honour others as well. And not just honour, but double honour for the preacher. Wow. I hope you're receiving double honour, die. We actually decided to respond to the call to honour our parents by honouring the organisation that initially brought us to Uganda, Hope Builders. And this was important for a couple of reasons. 
Firstly, because the relationship between us and Hope Builders had soured a little bit over the last uh, couple of years. Things had not necessarily been all that smooth between us and there'd been one or two incidents that caused a bit of conflict. But the other reason that it was important was because as leaders here, we needed to demonstrate that the message we are giving is not just words, but that it's backed up with action as well. And so we made a significant financial gift to Hope Builders by paying the school fees of uh, the P7 children for a whole term. Now, all along the way, we've been learning about generosity and much of that has been practical learning. We've had several visits here from the leadership of uh, Worship Harvest and each time they've come, uh, they come with a check in their hand and that's been for Engaging Education, the organisation that we have here. Now, the first time that was a real shock to us because we'd never received anything from Ugandans before. It's kind of always been us giving rather than us receiving. Now, those checks have added up to over 5,000 Australian dollars worth. Um, so it's really blown us away. Another example of the generosity uh, of Worship Harvest has been that uh, every week, uh, all the tithes and offerings from each of the locations come in and 10% of that is given to another church in Uganda. And not it's not been necessary for that church to be one that has sort of agreed with and got along with Worship Harvest. Some of the churches who've received have in fact actively preached against uh, Worship Harvest, but they've still been given um, those gifts. Now, just two weeks ago, the first week of the new financial year, in fact, the entire collection of offerings and tithes um, was given away to uh, a ministry that had been had played a significant part in the development and the, the growth of Worship Harvest in the earlier days. Now, it turns out that's actually a ministry based in the United States. This is a Ugandan church, an African church, giving its entire offering for uh, one week to a church, well, a ministry in the United States. We have this picture that Africa is very dependent and is all about receiving, receiving. Well, Worship Harvest is starting to turn that around and the generosity of that church, of this church is just incredible. We have had personal um, benefit out of that as well. When we were on our way to come to Australia a few weeks back, uh, we were actually given a gift by the church then uh, for ourselves, but also we were given a gift for you at YVV. And at this point in time, I'm supposed to be handing over to you an envelope that contains 1,000 US dollars, uh, which was a gift from Worship Harvest to Yarra Valley Vineyard, honouring you as our parent church. Um, I'm obviously going to have to hang on to those dollars and maybe work out something with Gary Volmer about how we get the money into the YBV bank account. But that's just an incredible blessing from Worship Harvest to YBV. And so now Anne's going to come and uh, share a few of her thoughts of things we've been learning. So as you can tell, we're loving Worship Harvest and it's just been amazing to get to know such amazing people that are just living lives of significance and making a change in the community and in this nation. And uh, so as you know and, and we know, it's by their fruits you will, you will know them and uh, the fruits of Worship Harvest are very evident and a large part of that is through the whole discipleship program that, that runs throughout the, the church and uh, it's, it's something that we've always looked at, discipleship, and uh, we've longed for to happen in a deeper way and now we're getting to see it happening 
And so there's a few things that I'd like to talk to you about. Um, the first is, is talking about obedience and following instructions, something that is not so easy perhaps to, to talk about. But let's start in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. And you probably all remember that that's the Great Commission. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. And a big bit about this is the key thing of following instructions. If you're going to have somebody as a disciple, they need to follow instructions. And and that's something that we've we've not done very well as Australians. Australians are like us, are very much about what what do we want to do? Is it okay for us? Rather than we just have to do something. And so we have have been learning all about that. Um, that how it is to be obedient, how to choose to, to follow and to, to do rather than to question. And, uh, and that's what the, the Word of God tells us to do. And so that's what we're doing. And, and becoming, and we're becoming those shepherds. So we're, we're becoming shepherds as we're shepherded. And Jeremiah 3 verse 15 talks about that. And it says, I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And so, so we are being shepherded very well by Apostle Mose as he teaches regularly to us and we are also teaching and uh, having giving instruction to those that, are, that we uh, have under us. And uh, it's a learning curve and we are learning all the time. And it... And it is an important thing to re recognise that principle of, of being obedient and following. And, and I suppose the biggest thing about that is that it's much, much easier to, to do something when you see results. When you go to the gym and you see results, you are much keener to go in the next time. Whereas if you're not seeing results, well, we're seeing results. Let me just give you a very quick glimpse of of one, and it is one out of a multitude of these sorts of things. Uh, last Saturday morning, we were busy packing food with some of the now teachers who are ex-PTC students and uh, to give out to the community. And after that had finished, there was a time lag and I was just sharing with some of the girls who were concerned about people that they were discipling who were concerned that they couldn't go out and do any evangelism and um, get out of where they were and so I was saying well there is an option and that is that you can pray they can pray and then ask God to show them who to ring and they can make a phone call and it can be an encouraging phone call well one of the girls by that evening messaged me back and said I did what you said those words I did what you said and I prayed and I had the thought of this person I rang him and he said that he's wanting to confess Christ to become a Christian but he needs a pastor and she said I told him I could do it and so he became a Christian he asked her to give him a new name because he he was a Muslim and so he needed to have a Christian name and now she's in the process of discipling this young man and that's the the story of one life that has just been transformed. Transformed because somebody chose to obey rather than to say, ah, no, it's too hard. And uh, we're excited by that. And so we're excited because it's also fulfilling what it says in 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, which, which is, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. And that's the process. We get to teach, we get to be taught, we get to teach, they get to teach, they get to teach. And so that's good. Keep going. And uh, then 1 Corinthians 11.1 1 says, imitate me just as I imitate Christ. And that's what 
what discipleship is about. We've never really done that properly. We've never done that discipleship intentionally. It's been a bit haphazard. We've we've encouraged people, we've kept in touch with people, but, but this is this is discipleship of actually training somebody in the way that they should go and really helping them. But none of this, of course, is easy. And there's two sides to it. One is following instructions and one is giving instructions. And if you're the person giving instructions, then you have to be very sure. And so so we've seen in our own lives a huge turnaround, a turnaround in our prayer life. We now endeavour to pray two hours every morning. A turnaround in our actions. We continue to study God's word. We continue to seek places to, to listen to, to what he's saying and be taught by and grow in our own faith so that what, we, what we're passing on is worth having. And uh, so we're getting there and we are enjoying the journey. The church had uh, a prophetic word from Isaiah 60 at the start of the year. Isaiah 60 verse 22 a little one shall become a thousand and a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its day. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's hastening it in, in, in this time. The church has grown from 5,000 to 13,000 in a few months. It is, everything is growing. Our, our little location is now grown so that we had 270 people last week. We've seen in this t period of time about 40 baptisms in our church. And it's not just our church, Worship Harvest. Um, Worship Harvest has chosen in its generosity to also mentor other churches because it sees that the kingdom is, a, is bigger than its own church. And that's really, really exciting. And that mentorship program... One example from that, and it's only one amongst many, is of a pastor who has been pastoring for seven years and has about 70 people in January through the mentorship program. The last we heard, his church is now 1,000 or more. They're people that's lives are being transformed. That's so, so exciting. And, and it's part of what we're also learning in terms of be fruitful and multiply which is what God said. God said in Gen Genesis 1 verse 28, then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. And he continues throughout Genesis to say those same things. Genesis 35 verse 11, and God said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply, a nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you. And that's the that's the thing that we have to take these promises that are there from the Old Testament and put them into our lives now. I've been a person who has probably had not the appropriate, no, not not possibly, definitely, not had the appropriate respect for the Old Testament and, and what it has to say today. And I've just been really, we our eyes have been opened to what God wants to do. Because in Galatians 3.5, it says, Those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. I'm a son of Abraham. And what was said to Abraham beforehand was, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So, so these are the things that we're, we're learning and we're growing in. And uh, so fruitfulness has happened through, through these people becoming Christians. We've seen a young man came along to... To the service on a Sunday, someone had asked him. He was keen to come on the to the small group on the Wednesday night, and then because his brother was sick, I took a um, another church member with me, and we went to pray for his brother. And in the process of that, we explained the gospel, and both of them made a commitment for Christ. Sean himself said, "I've just been waiting for someone to ask." It's it's that, it's, it's the boldness that comes of knowing that what we have is so worthwhile. Um, we, we have these missional communities, which are just great groups. It was that group on a Wednesday night where there's teaching and then there is time to, to grow together. So 
The slogan is that we pray together, we play together, we eat together, we grow together and we go out together. And so these missional communities are places for growth. They, they are also play, the very thing that, that does the evangelism, the very thing that does the transforming of the community because people go out and, and do something to help in the community to transform it and by extension it transforms many lives and it's exciting to see and it's also a place of growth because people bring their friends and then the the smaller groups within the small group then become a new group a new MC and we're seeing that and we're seeing that so that's the fruitfulness happening and then the multiplication is the, the multiplication of churches and the way that things are happening in that way and and it's an exciting place to be in. It's a place that we, it's, it seems unreal. And what is really lovely is to see these young people who've never known church to be anything else, but, but a place where you learn, you pray, you do. And, and they're freely doing, giving of their time, freely wanting others to know the same transformation in their lives. We are so privileged to be part of it but we don't want it to stay here in Uganda. We want it to reach out further. Um, we want Australia to, to have it. We want YVV to, to share in what, what we're seeing. And, and hopefully some of this message can help you understand a bit more about that. At the end of teaching sessions, there's two things that happen. One is that we ask three, two questions. And the two questions are, what is Jesus saying to you? And what are you going to do about it? And I'd ask those questions to you. And I'd ask you to, to think about what your answers are. What is Jesus saying to you today? And what are you going to do about it? Because we must not just be hearers of the word. We must be doers of the word. And, and the word is, is, needs to be planted in the lives of so many people um, in Uganda and in Australia and around the world. The other thing that we do at the end of every Every time that we get together when there will be people that are, are not pastors and that is that we ask the question and the question is have you made the best decision in that you can make and that is to accept the person who wants to transform your life into the best it can possibly be, who wants to, to make the biggest difference. And so if that's you, we're not there, so we're, we're not going to pray with you, but we do ask that that a prayer that you do acknowledge your need and do something about it. Thank you so much for this opportunity. So thank you for listening to us. We pray that it's been a, a significant time for you. We do miss being in Australia. We love what we're doing, but yeah. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to yeah. share with you today. Um, we think of YVV often, and uh, we'd love to be there, but we're not able to at this point in time, so that's okay. Um, just as we close, I would like to pray, if that's okay. Father God, we thank you for all your blessings. We thank you for what you're doing here in Uganda with us and through Worship Harvest Ministries. Thank you for the, the people that are getting to know you every day. And Lord, I pray too for YVV, and thank you for them. Thank you for the ministry uh, that is going on there and for yeah, just what you're doing in the lives of, of people there, the, the support that you are to them and the way that you're helping them through whatever situations they face. And Father, we pray that uh, yeah, if there's a, a blessing you've given us, Lord, that that impartation would flow to um, the people who are hearing this message today. And, uh, and so we thank you, Lord, mm -hmm. for all that you do and we pray a blessing on YVV in mm. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Wasn't that amazing and surprising and wonderful to hear this message from Ron and Anne? As you know, we've been preparing at Yarra Valley Vineyard 
so that our hearts would be overflowing with love towards them and we wanted to do that through a love offering. Now because of lockdown we are obviously unable to collect your envelopes that you've been praying about and any cash offerings that we could receive we can't do that this weekend but we will do that as soon as we're back in person and I imagine the first week in August is going to be the time that we can bring our envelopes and our love offerings to Ron and Anne. But we've also got a way to transfer some of those love offerings straight into the Yarra Valley Vineyard Bank account which we will tag and we will put together for the full amount of um, extravagant generous love that we will bring to Ron and Anne through your giving and through our own hearts of generosity to bless them and love them. So there'll be just some details going up on that. And if you'd like to do that through cash, please do that as well on August uh, the 6th when we're gathering back together. All right. Thank you and have a great week praying for you all and love you all. <laughs>